Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> all right, so we will call the meeting to order here at 6.02. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Hopefully we get another person or two, but since we do have a quorum, we'll proceed. Um, I don't believe we have any members of the public at this point, uh, so I don't think there's any public comment, but we'll uh, skip right along to approval of the minutes. So included in our packet uh, were the minutes from our previous meeting. Uh, so hopefully you guys have had a chance to review those. Josh? I have a couple of corrections. Mm -hmm. um, I got the date wrong on these minutes at the top where it says Thursday, January 19th, 2023. It should be Thursday, uh, February 16th, 2023. And then a little bit later on under item three, uh, the minutes we approved were the January 19th, 2023 minutes, not the 2022 minutes. That, I that is skipped both of those, so your proofreading is way better than mine. <laughs> well, I didn't catch those the first time, but <laughs> guess I did now. Okay. Any other amendments to the minutes anybody noticed? All right, so make those two changes, and then I would take a motion to approve the minutes as amended by Josh. So moved. Thank you, Lane. Second from Nancy. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Awesome. All right. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So moved. All right. Thank you very much. So we will proceed to other business. Uh, first item is subcommittee report. Um, I don't know. Do we have any subcommittees that have met since our last meeting? I know we're meeting quarterly with these. No, none of the subcommittees have met since the last meeting. Perfect. That makes this one really easy. All right. From there, we'll move on to staff updates, and Cynthia will turn the show over to you. Sure. Great. Thank you, Steve. So um, just a couple of things. Um, Taste of Towns uh, wrapped up uh, last week. Um, we had 21 participating restaurants. We had eight in Mansfield, including Hops 44. Um, we did get um, some good media coverage um, more than last year. So we had, um, uh, I'm sorry about the background. Um, we had uh, WFSB and WTNH um, and radio interviews on WILI and WHUS, um, articles in the Chronicle and the Mansfield Stores Patch. Um, also had a press conference with Lieutenant Governor Bicewich, um, which coincided with the Trigo um, wood-fired uh, pizza grand opening. Um, so we will be sending out some thank you notes to our restaurants and sponsors. Um, we did send out a survey um, and heard back from some of our restaurants, um, uh, got good reviews um, from who we heard back from. One of the suggestions was to maybe do a theme. Um, so I will personally be calling the restaurants as well to check in with them and thank them. Um, and then maybe I just ask Nancy if she has any feedback that she wants to give to the EDC or anybody else that went to the restaurants. Um, I think everything went well. Honestly, Cynthia, I was out for like 10 days. So during restaurant week, um, unfortunately, I was I had a medical issue. So I don't really know how much and how it went. As far as I know, it went well. I didn't hear anything from the from the staff otherwise. Okay, great. I went out, I went to Nancy's for restaurant week. That was my one stop, but it was awesome. The, the prefix menu was really cool. It kind of got you to try something you might not have other tried. It was tons of food. I was absolutely stuffed uh, and it was, it was great. So that was a really nice, um, Really nice experience. I agree. I also went to Nancy's um, and another restaurant as well. And when I was there at Nancy's, it was very busy. Um, the staff was on top of everything. The food was fantastic. It was such a nice experience. And the other restaurant we went to uh, was in Wyndham, the, the new pizza place. And that was busy as well. So it was really nice to see two two of our businesses are uh, very busy, but Nancy, your Oreos were amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I uh, went to Sticks and Stones 
and uh, the food was great up there. Uh, it was the business was brisk, and I went to Hoppy Days in Willimantic, and that was absolutely packed. Uh, right. They got some press, and uh, the restaurants much busier now after after that press. Wonderful. Awesome. Good to hear. That's great. That's Any other great. feedback on Restaurant Week? All righty. Well, that, uh, sorry, we're still on the staff updates. I just want to note. Sorry, I just yeah. want to note that I just uh, admitted Charles Osberger to the meeting. Great. Yeah. So, um, so just a couple of other things. So, the Taste of Mansfield Champion Award um, is uh, out there for nominations. Um, we have received two nominations thus far. Uh, it closes on. March 24th, so a week from tomorrow. Um, as you may recall, Lucy Aldrich on EDC had um, offered to uh, serve as the EDC rep on the evaluation of the nominations. And then um, Diane Dorfer, who was a recipient last year, um, she's volunteered on behalf of the Ag Committee. So between the staff team and the EDC and the Ag Committee reps, we'll review those applications sometimes at, sometime after the 24th. So, um, so that, that's good news. And then um, I want to Nancy, who participates on the steering committee for Connecticut's countryside, to give an update. We had a meeting uh, this week. Yeah, so the um, uh, country, Connecticut countryside involves the four towns, Coventry, Bolton, Tallinn, and Mansfield. And right now they're working on a, um, a flyer that's going out <clears throat> and it's, they're looking for places that it needs to be, um, that need, that we can put it in. So Yukon was one of the places. I think there's lots of different visitor centers and places that people, that we can just like stick them in. And um, it will, encompass all the different things that we can do in those different towns. I'm really looking, they're working on a website. So I'm really looking forward to like a one-stop shop where you can go to the, to the website and then look and see everything that's going on throughout all the towns. And then, you know, go off and branch off to the different towns if that's what you wanted to do. So it has to do with art, arts and culture and hiking and different outdoors activities farms, things like that. Nancy, did you think about, um, I know you said UConn dropping them off. What about dropping them off at real estate offices? Yeah, I think that would be a great idea. You know, like, especially like, okay, so like you sell a house, you give them like a little package, right? When you yep. are at closing, you know, that would, that would be a great avenue to get that out there as well. Or even right now, like there's, you know, it's sort of busy season things are picking up so just when you meet buyers they're looking at the area it'd be nice to have a kind of like a little sheet on what's great about this area in case you're looking at like maybe other towns around here or other parts of the state anything that showcases our area would be great yeah i think that's a really good idea steve yeah we're hoping to um to get some of those printed we're waiting on one more photo that has to be inserted into the brochure but hopefully by the end of the month we'll have some of those printed we'll get them out. Um, the one other thing that I thought I'd mention, Nancy, and, and Ryan's also on the call, is on the steering committee as well, um, is uh, we did receive uh, from the Eastern Regional Tourism District a grant for a video. And so um, DKA that worked with us on the brochure, worked on our, did our marketing plan, um, they'll be working uh, with uh, with a vendor on a video. And this is a quick turnaround. We have to spend the money by June 30th um, for the grant requirements. So we might not have it done, but we have to actually spend the money by the 30th. So that'll be exciting. Stay tuned uh, for more information on the video. So it's all coming together nicely, as Nancy said, with the website, the brochure, the video. Um, and uh, we are also working on some regional committees um, we had uh, Josh Hull, our intern, sent out some information on a regional ag committee. Um, he, I don't know if the email's gone out yet, but a regional um, arts group as well. So those were some of the things that came out of the summit, uh, some uh, action items. Great. 
And that's all I had, Steve, on staff reports, unless anybody has any other questions. I don't see any hands, so I think we're good on that one. Um, <clears throat> all right, so uh, that takes us to business updates, openings, and closings. Uh, the one that I had to throw out there is apparently we're getting a Lego store uh, in the Villa Spirit uh, Dollar General Plaza, so right next to uh, Red Rock. <clears throat> it looks like uh, the sign on the door says it'll be opening April 1st. Brian? What's going on with the Dollar General? I guess people are saying it's closed or something. Uh, is that temporary? No, it's not closed. I was in there yesterday. I was in there today. It's not closed. Okay. There was it's, some comment on Facebook. That's all. It's full. Like the aisles have <clears throat> like carts full of merchandise in them. So I don't know if they're reorganizing or restocking or whatever, but. Um, yeah, definitely open. Charlie? Yeah, I was in there the other day, and they, uh, the carts in the aisle are generally just restocking. It's just when the cashiers can get to it. As a matter of that's what all that is. The place is busy, and they turn over a lot of merchandise. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Tim, did you have any other openings or closings that we've noted? Um. Not that I can think of. There is some activity going on in that former tile store on Stores Road. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Was it Sam? Oh, Sam Tree. Sam Tree. I saw some trucks there today, so I'm not sure what's going mm -hmm. on there. Okay. Brian? When's Chase Bank opening? So last they told us was... Um, this month or next month and when i say they i mean the property owner not chase all right great I, yeah uh so not as much activity as last month but last month we had an awful lot so <laughs> we'll uh we'll average it all out um housing updates we had a memo uh from jennifer kaufman with what kind of was going on and then a link to that storyboard that she keeps really up to date um, they're still moving forward on the standard uh, here on 195. Um, I don't know what else. Um, did, I don't know if anyone had any questions. We can pass back to Jennifer. Um, if you got a chance to read her memo or look at the storyboard. <clears throat> nope. Okay. Cynthia, anything you wanted to say about the housing or pretty good? No, I think we're good. You know, I had sent out earlier the the denial um, on the the one area across the street from the standard. So um, I think everybody got that from my other email, and Jennifer just um, reiterated that in her memo. Yeah, the uh, mixed with the transition zone right. uh, was denied for the um, the property just past Timber Drive on 195, across right across from where the old Willard was. All right. Uh, hey, ben, I'm sorry. I have one, one question on housing. Uh, yep. Does Does anybody know the vacancy rate uh, up in the downtown, the Oaks? My understanding is they are, um, and this is currently not for their next leasing period. Is that they're last I heard they're about ninety percent leased. Okay, that's kind of the industry standard there. Thank you. I just looked uh, late last week and at the rent uh, prices in there and they're still moving upward. At least the published prices on the website are still higher every year. So I think it depends on which, which version of the three bedroom you get, but they range from 44 to $4,700 a month for a three bedroom in stores, <laughs> which, is, which is amazing. So <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah. So much for affordable housing. <laughs> yeah, or I guess the other way you could look at it is so much for lack of demand, right? Yeah, everybody's worried about, oh, there's no demand to fill all this, but prices still keep going up. So um, anyway, uh, so we have the calendar included in case anyone has anything that they need to add to that. Um, and without any uh, other stuff for that, we'll move right into the discussion items. Uh, the big one for tonight is the town council budget presentation. 
uh, which we discussed a little bit the last time. And I know Cynthia has it loaded up on her machine. I don't think it, it wasn't in the packet, right, Cynthia? That's correct. Okay. Um, so Cynthia and Kristen and I met and did kind of a run through to update this to uh, what's more current to what we accomplished over the last 12 months and then kind of talking about what our goals are for the next 12 months. Uh, so we thought we'd kind of just present the slides here for the EDC to take a look at and then let us know if we forgot anything, if we should change anything, if, um, yeah, if, we, if there's any changes we need to make before we present it to the town council. So uh, just as a reminder, we do this every year, it's sort of like an update as to what we got done and then what we're planning on doing. So. Um, Kristen, do you want to jump in or do you want me to try to run through these or how do you want to do this? Uh, we can share, Steve. That's fine. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and uh, as we're going through, I think we should go through just each slide, see what's on there, and see um, if there's any comments from um, from EDC. So, uh, if we want to go to the next slide, Cynthia, are you controlling or Steve? Yes, are you controlling? I'm controlling it. So my powers and duties, is that where you want me to be? Okay, can you move on to the next slide, please? Yep. Sure. Okay, thank you. So uh, it gives a little history about when we were established. Perfect. Oh, there's the, the mission, okay, um, with looking at supporting the existing businesses in town the focus on development in the targeted areas, which we've talked about, and then also uh, looking to recruit new businesses in our, in our community. So everyone wants to take a moment. Thank you, I'm sorry, something got delayed on my. Sorry, Kristen, we're, we're, you're cutting in and out a little bit, so we're getting, we're getting most of it, but it kind of comes and goes. I apologize. I'm okay. I'm trying to make sure I'm plugged in here. Um, Steve, go ahead for just a minute. I'm going to see yeah. if I can get my internet to work a little bit better. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so <clears throat> some of the we broke the work priorities out into the three different um, subcommittees. So the first subcommittee we did was the business outreach and support. Uh, the main function of this one, as we all know, but just to reiterate, would be the business visits, um, the exit interviews, uh, providing updates and input on uh, business related pages from the town website, uh, providing social media content to the town communication specialist uh, to promote Mansfield businesses, and helping to assist town events that benefit Mansfield businesses. Um, and it was interesting, I, I was at Bagel Zone uh, yesterday and I was chatting with Sue and she mentioned getting Cynthia's email yesterday. I guess Cynthia emailed the businesses that this coming weekend is uh, the NCAA tournament and that they should be uh, cognizant of that and prepare for added, um, hopefully added uh, patronage and more people around and, and you know more business. So I think it's little things like that, These these emails that the staff send out that help keep businesses current and up to date with what's going on that can really be like the value add way for us to help um, businesses in town. So Cynthia, thank you for doing that. That was really nice. Uh, the next one is the Development Project Review Committee, uh, where we review the draft regulations that the TZC is putting out and try to provide feedback. Obviously, we did that at our last meeting. Uh, we've done, I think, three or four different letters uh, over the last year. Uh, we also review different proposals, um, which again, we've done a couple letters on that, like the Champagne Motor Cars redevelopment and a couple others. 
Uh, and we try to review all these with our EDC guiding principles that we all kind of discussed and arrived at. Um, yeah. And then the other uh, set of work priorities would have been through the governance, which is to recruit new members and to come up with our yearly budget. Uh, one of the big things that, and Kristen, if, if you're, you want to jump back in? Sure. Let's see. It, just let me know if I'm um, breaking up as I'm talking. No, I'm better great. now. Okay, great. So um, then, okay. <laughs> wonderful. Uh, then we were hoping to present on a little bit about ARPA and how the EDC and the partnership um, implemented the council's business and nonprofit relief program. Uh, there were two rounds. Um, and that the nonprofits were added into the second round and that 37 applications were approved for funding. Okay. And then next. Are the accomplishments um, for 2022. Uh, one is supporting the wayfinding signage program, so um, the involvement in sessions with the stakeholders, um, conducting, a, you know, we, the um, partnership really looked at the surveys of residents, um, completing design and programming and identifying locations for signage in town. Um, and then with regard to um, zoning and development, reviewing proposals and providing feedback to the planning and zoning commission, which um, which we do regularly, which is great. And I think everyone can probably tell, but I know that. Oh, go ahead, like Steve. The, the before and after of the standard project. So on the left, you have uh, in the bottom, bottom right hand corner of the left picture, that's Willard and then Holiday Mall. And then um, Sam Schrager's building. And just above that is the old two steps. And then in the right picture, you can see the exact same uh, spot location, but now it's been um, cleared and is getting uh, the site work done to um, prepare it for construction of the standard at Four Corners. So definitely making some good progress and it's changing every day over there. <clears throat> I know some really nice pictures of um, different places in town in this presentation this year. Um, in including pictures on this slide, uh, where we talk about business development and support, um, how we went out and re and we were talking about the co-working spaces, um, and we went down to West Hartford and met with their team and toured their location. Um, in addition, um, events such as, you know, winter welcome. So looking at how we're having those community events to support businesses and their, you know, even um, from these events, how businesses are making connections with different businesses and talking with different people in the community. So we've had a lot of very positive feedback about those events, um, supporting the second taste of two towns, um, how eight Mansfield restaurant restaurants participated, and um, also that we're beginning to investigate the cultural district designation to support our arts community in town. Okay, and that'll lead us also into talking about Taste of Mansfield. Yep, and now we have, um, well, <clears throat> with the Taste of Mansfield, which we've continued to um, support, we also have the Taste of Mansfield Champions Award, uh, which last year went to Cobblestone Farm CSA, uh, Tri-County Greenhouse over on 44, and Stephanie Deason, who was uh, the former Mansfield Middle School Food Services Coordinator, I guess it is. Um, and we also, uh, as part of this, continued um, connecting low-income residents with local farms, and then you have a couple of different um, grants through which we were able to uh, help assist with that. And then this is the uh, Four Town Initiative. Uh, so as Cynthia uh, mentioned at the beginning of the meeting and Nancy is kind of elaborating on, the Four Town Initiative is now the Connecticut Countryside Initiative. <laughs> uh, and so they are fo the focus for that is on outdoor recreation, agriculture, and agritourism, uh, which are two things that we play to our strengths for sure. Uh, culture and entertainment, entrepreneurs and small business, 
uh, marketing, partnering with regional higher ed institutions and plan administration. And this is all kind of coalescing into something that's starting to turn out deliverables, which is what uh, Nancy was discussing at the beginning of our meeting. Mm -hmm. And it is exciting that we have these continued meetings and that Nancy and our town manager are a part of these meetings as well. Um, and that we get the updates and that we have um, a voice at the meetings. Um, in addition, there was an intern hired um, from Yukon Masters of Public Administration's program. Um, there were two webinars that were hosted by Yukon's Career Services, which were well advertised, and um, then develop a advertising, and then the summit that was held in January 2023 um, as a follow up to the stakeholder meeting that was uh, the kickoff meeting that was in 2019. And since then, more partners have come on board and they're developing additional goals uh, for Connecticut's countryside, which is exciting to hear about. Um, the main 2023 goals are to develop that website and the video content that Nancy and Cynthia had talked about earlier. Then it moves into more of the EDC goals uh, for 2023. Uh, we'd like to continue to promote the Opportunity Zone, which includes the Four Corners, uh, as well as other areas that we've, we've discussed for many years now, including the Southern Gateway, which is the Eastbrook Mall area, uh, Perkins Corner. Um, we'd like to continue doing the business visits uh, that we've um, just begun, just kind of restarted doing, uh, and then continue investigating this Mansfield Cultural District as a way to not only support the arts community, but to serve as a promotional and marketing tool that can help bring other people into the area um, and and also a kind of ancillary to this, we think that it also may open up further funding opportunities in the future um, if you hold that designation. So it may allow us to tackle some other projects, grant funded projects, um, if we're able to, to get the designation. Thanks, Steve. And in addition, um, that continued implementation of the positioning and marketing development plan. So the outreach to Connecticut tourism, um, finalizing that community calendar for the town website, um, finalizing the online parcel book, um, updating the town economic development web, page, web pages, including the business directory uh, that we've been talking about. And of course, completing that wayfinding and signage plan, um, which you can see examples of on the right. And then we have our, our budget proposal, which is very, very similar to the budget proposal from last year. Um, it would be to continue the consulting agreement with the downtown partnership, which has um, helped provide the staff, uh, staffing to the EDC so we can continue making these um, steps forward. Uh, 50,000 to implement the town positioning and marketing development plan. This is sort of a ongoing thing we've done for a couple of years as we continue to implement the marketing plan that was developed. Um, 5,000 to continue to support the Taste of Mansfield. Again, something we've done for several years now and has had a nice impact, positive impact on our community. And then uh, you know, 750 bucks for memberships, training, and, and other activities. <clears throat> okay, and then finally, our recommendations to the council would be that continued support of the marketing activities to promote Mansfield to new businesses and to our residents, to support the continued work of Connecticut's countryside, uh, to continue to work with UConn on the issues impacting economic development in Mansfield. Um, of course, this is including, but not limited to, promoting mutually beneficial commercial and housing development projects. And then finally, you know, to continue to support business growth in Mansfield while preserving our historical and country characteristics, uh, which continue to make us a destination in Connecticut. And kind of to that last point, um, you know, I, I understand from conversations with PZC and the town council that they're getting a lot of feedback from community residents, especially now that the standard of four corners is under construction. You can actually see things changing. 
Uh, and we just kind of want to reiterate that this is all this has been in 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 process and in the plan ever since the Mansfield Tomorrow and the um, Plan of Conservation and Development. None of this happened overnight. It's been years and years and years in the planning and the making. We've had lots of people um, from all different parts of our community um, work on coming up with a cohesive goal where we would like to see development and where, and more specifically where we don't want to see development. And we have a very unique town with a lot of great characteristics and a lot of places where development isn't appropriate. Uh, but there are a couple, which again, we've reiterated many times, but the four corners, the southern end of town, um, Perkins Corner, where some limited development would be appropriate. And it's beneficial for our town. It, it helps diversify our tax base, helps make it easier for homeowners, uh, it gives us more uh, resources. Um, and so none of this is stuff that's just reiterating that while, while maybe town council and PZC are getting complaints recently, it's from people who haven't been paying attention necessarily to everything that's gone on for the last five or 10 or 15 years uh, that all this has been in the work. <clears throat> so I think that's pretty much it, but at this point we would love to get feedback from the rest of the commission and see if anyone has anything that you would like us to change or add or remove or just your thoughts. Have we uh, been sent this? Or discuss further. Has everybody been, have we been sent this PowerPoint presentation yet? Uh, not yet, nope. Okay, if you can send it to the, to the members, then I can probably uh, comment at a later date. So we are presenting on the 27th, which is not this coming Monday, but the following Monday. Uh, so if you have any thoughts, um, we'll, we'll email this out after the, after the uh, meeting tonight. We did, um, Brian, I don't know if you were here last meeting or not, we did have it at the last meeting as well. Um, so we're uh, absolutely happy to incorporate feedback. And if anyone has any now we can incorporate, that's great. And if not, we'll take your uh, silence as positive affirmation that we did a good job and <laughs> didn't miss anything. Thank you, Nancy. All right. Um, Cynthia, anything that I forgot with this you want to add or? No, I think um, you and Kristen did a great job. And I want to thank Kathleen and her office too for doing the layout um, and getting everything uh, to look great. It, it looks awesome. And the photos this year are really, really cool. A lot of that for opening one is such a unique perspective of our town. And I think it really says a lot. Um, when we send it out, if you, if you missed it at the beginning, check it out because it's such a cool photo for a number of reasons. It shows the Mansfield downtown in the foreground and you have you know four five-story buildings whatever they are uh and then you have the uh horse barn hill and what and i guess is the um part of joshua's trust or whatever the land is that's behind yukon and it's all forced in the background and it's kind of a nice mix it just shows we have some development but we're still really really rural and i think that's a nice way to kind of describe our town limited development with a lot of rural care so all right, um, so moving forward on the agenda, next we have the business networking event. Um, this is something we've talked about for a little bit. We're starting to try to uh, firm up a date. Um, we're, we've reached out to the downtown partnership to see if they wanna partner with us in this, or if we should kind of move forward on our own uh, timetable. And I think if we move forward on our own, we talked about maybe end of summer, like July, August uh, as, a, as a time frame for it, sometime when it's not, um, when the students are around, so business owners are a little bit, have a little bit less on their plate. Uh, and we don't wanna do it near any of the, down, the downtown partnership events because we don't wanna overtax business owners. We want this kind of networking event to stand on its own. Um, so that's sort of what we're thinking about for now, but if anyone has any feedback, we would definitely welcome it. All 
Okie dokie. <laughs> we'll take that as we're moving in the right direction with that idea. Um, discussion of the Center for Eco Technology and Waste Reduction. Cynthia, you're going to have to help me on this one. I don't remember where this one came out of. Sure. Yeah, I'm happy to. So, um, Ginny Walden, who I'm sure many of you know, the recycling coordinator uh, for the town of Mansfield, uh, she approached me because she had been in a discussion with the Center for Eco Technology, uh, which is located in Massachusetts, and um, they do provide services to businesses to uh, receive free waste reduction uh, assessment on site at your business. And the flyer is something that um, I asked them to put together. Um, and the thinking is if the EDC thinks this is a good idea that we would send this out probably through the business digest that Kathleen does monthly that we send out to all our uh, businesses in town um, that we have emails for. And um, if there was a, a substantial number of people, I think they would do it, you know, probably for up to, or I think at the very least seven businesses that wanted to do this, they come on site, give you a free assessment, um, and then and then go from there. There's, you know, no pressure. They kind of take the perspective that, you know, each business knows what works best for them. Um, but we thought it was a great opportunity um, to send this out to businesses, but I wanted to get your feedback before we did so. What exactly uh, are, are we uh, promoting for ECHO technology? So, you know, I think one of the things they could come in and say, for instance, if a business uh, wanted to compost and they wanted to learn more about how to do that within their within their business space that would be an example um you know how to maybe use uh plastics more effectively i'm just kind of you know throwing ideas out there um so yeah i think it's pretty open so our our role in this would be sort of a passive endorsement of this program to our area businesses we're not really um, we're not getting our hands dirty actually doing any of the work. We're just kind of helping promote this um, program that's run through the Center uh, for Eco-Technology eco uh, and helping assist to get this information out to our area business basis. Exactly. I think it sounds very interesting. I think we should promote it. I mean, I don't know how, vi like in my own business, I don't know how viable I would be able to use something like this. But we have a lot of waste <laughs> and it just goes into the dumpster. So if we could reuse those kinds of things, then, you know, that would be helpful to know or how to go about doing that. It doesn't seem like there's a real downside to at least offering this to businesses in our town. Kristen? I agree as well. I think as long as there's there's nothing that has to be done or they're not pushing a specific type of um, reduction or reduction plan, I think then that makes sense. It's a nice thing to be able to offer as as an option for businesses. And I'd be curious to see how many businesses would be would be interested. Okay, so I think we can take that as support from the EDC to proceed with this. Uh, initiative Cynthia do you want like a formal vote or is that good enough? no no that's fine that's fine that's great that's perfect actually I should say uh you know it did come the salt Ginny staffs the solid waste advisory committee so it did come from the committee too so I, I should have prefaced my comments with that all right um anything else on this one from anybody all right next on the agenda is the Yukon town uh, collaboration update, um, which I don't think that committee has met since our last meeting. The last uh, scheduled meeting was last week and that got uh, postponed or canceled. So I don't know that we have anything to update here unless uh, if Ryan wants to tell me I'm wrong and jump in with an update, feel free. Otherwise, I'll assume that there's no new news on that one. You are correct. There's not much to update. There's been issues, uh, scheduling issues, I guess is essentially what it boils down to, uh, boils down to the appropriate represent, representatives' schedules uh, and standing meetings, I think, for the right folks are sort of 
shifting. And so we're going to have to identify a new recurring meeting date that poses fewer conflicts, I think. So Kara is uh, working with her folks on that. And hopefully uh, we'll get it re-energized here pretty soon. Great. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the UConn student collaboration. Uh, and I asked Cynthia to kind of leave this as a standing item on our agenda. Uh, so a few months back, um, actually with Kara from UConn, Kara Workman, uh, reached out to us and said that um, representatives from the undergraduate government, I believe, at UConn, uh, students uh, wanted to know how they could be uh, engaged and assist with economic development here in Mansfield. Uh, so we've been looking for um, a project that might be appropriate to have everybody kind of work together on. Um, so we have thoughts of trying to engage them on the um, project that I think it was, we discussed this, I think two meetings back, the idea of having the roundabouts and the, and the sidewalk at the four corners. So the two roundabouts and then that sidewalk that would connect the four corners up to Yukon. Um, and so we'll see if that, if we can figure out a way to get them engaged on that, but they are um, a significant part of the population here in our town. And so getting them involved in appropriate um, projects would be a nice way to keep them in, engaged and make them a bigger part of the community. So, uh, but I don't think we have any specific action items to discuss. This is just sort of something we're going to leave on here so that we don't forget that they are a resource we might be able to tap. And actually, just a quick update on that front, uh, Steve. Um, so yesterday, yeah, yesterday, yesterday, the day before yesterday, I'm losing track. I think it was yesterday. Uh, we submitted the first of two uh, requests for funding, uh, member-directed con congressional funding, otherwise known as earmark funding, um, for the multi-use trail piece of the project work that you're talking about. So. Uh, with cost escalators, we've actually applied for funding now three years running. And so the base cost has kind of grown from 3 million to I think it's about 3.7 million now. But uh, we submitted a funding request through Congressman Courtney's office yesterday and submitted our second request through Senator Murphy's office uh, today. And UConn, both the uh, uh, President uh, Merrick, as well as the Student Government Association, submitted uh, letters of support or statements of support for that project. So, uh, hopefully, third time's a charm. Uh, we'd certainly love to have a much safer way for uh, folks on bikes and pedestrians to get from the downtown area to the Four Corners and from the Four Corners to the downtown. Uh, it's about a 0.9 mile, just under a mile stretch of uh, 195 that we're trying to. Uh, promote safety and promote uh, connectivity. So uh, we'll see what happens with our funding request this time around. Ryan, were they able to do the request without the rotaries, just just the sidewalk or the multi Yeah, so basically um, we, we, we talked about the project differently this time around. We emphasized quite heavily actually that this is part of a larger vision that would include the two roundabouts, but we only requested funding basically based on the uh, what appeared to be the upper upper end of the award amounts we might expect. Um, it would be a $10 million project if you included the roundabouts. So we figured let's start here. It definitely works. Even if the roundabouts never happened, this would still be a, a major improvement. But our vision is for this trail to basically be in, integrated with uh, that pair of roundabouts that we've been talking about now for, for some months. So so we'll see what happens, but when it comes to our applications to uh, Congressman Courtney and Senator Murphy, uh, we definitely talked about the larger vision and talked about the roundabouts this year, whereas we hadn't um, touched on that before. Great, thank you. Anyone have any thoughts or questions on any of that? Uh, Charlie. Oh, you're muted. <clears throat> um, th this discussion has been about uh, the roundabouts in the four corners. Well, the, the, yeah, the, so basically, that... conceptually, uh, we've been talking about the potential for a pair of roundabouts in the four corners to improve the intersection 
that's there, both from a safety standpoint, from a traffic flow standpoint, and a, a gateway, if you will, presentation standpoint. I don't think anybody would say that what we have now is a particularly uh, aesthetically pleasing introduction to the downtown area when you come in on 195 from, from Tallinn direction. And so we are looking at the possibility of a large roundabout at 195 and 44. That roundabout is already on a, a state roundabout priority list. I think it's 44th or something to that effect overall statewide in terms of the priority roundabout list. And then also a roundabout at uh, 195 and 320. So however many hundreds of feet back uh, that would be. And I know this got raised before. I know Nancy asked about it. I think we sent over kind of the conceptual site plan, so to speak. Uh, so there would be uh, egress and ingress, uh, if you want to call it that, from directly from the roundabout into um, the, you know, hops and toast and those those businesses there. So it would not be in any way. In fact, it would be probably a, a benefit to that. It, would, it shouldn't be a, a barrier, though. So do these planners think that an, a, a roundabout and such a high volume, high traffic area is such a great idea? Actually, because it's a high traffic area, that's specifically one of the reasons why they think it's because it keeps keeps traffic moving at all times. You don't you don't get those bottlenecks. I mean, you get, we'll get a bottleneck in the sense the traffic will kind of accordion there, but it keeps cars constantly moving. And so that's that's one of the, the touted benefits of roundabouts. I see. All right. Um, uh, next on our agenda is promotion of arts in Mansfield. Um, and so <clears throat> I think it was an attachment. It wasn't in the packet, but it was an attachment in the email. Uh, you should have seen the uh, request for concepts for um, that was distributed out to artists with the list of places that we're looking, the town is looking to have art installations um, potentially uh, located. Um, Tim, do you want to expand on that a little? Sure. Um, so it was in the packet, but it was also listed as an attachment um, so that people would have it. So a little bit of background um, on at the August, I think, 8th town council meeting, um, the town council considered ARPA funds for the arts. And there were three pieces in there. There was public art, a potential art fair and potential direct grants to artists. Um, and the council approved $75,000. So at that point, um, I started to work on a request for public art. I worked with Wendy Berry with the uh, Cultural Coalition. Um, she suggested doing a request for concepts, um, which allows people to do a fairly straightforward design of public art that they may wanna see in several locations throughout Mansfield. And because artists are often asked to do things without being compensated, the idea was to uh, choose the top three, uh, provide $1,000 each for a total of 3,000, and then ask for a larger proposal. Um, I did run this by staff. I also ran it by the Arts Advisory Committee. And then some uh, feedback that I'd heard um, from Ryan through, uh, through Charlie, some of his um, uh, additional information and having some art that can be moved around uh, in terms of not just necessarily permanent art. So the request for concepts has been um, released. It's up on the town's website. It was sent to the Cultural Coalition. Uh, they have it on their website. It was sent to their email list, um, was forwarded on to Parks and Rec Department, and uh, Margaret did a press release. So that will close on April 6th at 4 o'clock. Any question, uh, Charlie? Um, Cynthia, you said it will close. What, is, what do you mean by that? So the proposals will be due by April 6th at four o'clock. The proposals for- the, the, the concepts, I should say, yes. I see. Um, I, I'm really confused by all of this. Um, I, I think I recall that this concept when it came out of committee, was such that we were going to design several art spaces across Mansfield um, of a rotating nature that would 
encourage um, art from, to be produced on a regular rotating basis, um, you know, as it gets submitted and it would be submitted to the Arts Advisory Commission that would then in turn uh, be moved into the spaces. And the concept was such that we were going to make it like an arch trail, so to speak, like very much like a wine trail where people could perhaps by barcode or some other means try to find all the different spaces. Uh, art spaces in Mansfield. Um, and there is also, of course, the potential on the back end for someone who would perhaps want to sell their piece. Um, that, you know, that of course being up to them. But the important thing is, is that it it offers up an outlet for, and in particular, the genesis of this for our young people to be able to come forward and to, uh, to to express themselves. Now, of course, you may recall that the whole genesis of this was started by uh, Matt Waitkiss, who wanted a concept of a space for the kids who were graffitiing the skate park. And he said, well, what if we had a place that was an outlet for them? So rather than them putting graffiti all over the skate park, that we gave them an outlet to do it and encouraged them to actually paint and to and channel that energy into a more positive place. Uh, and from there, we went forward with the concept within the Arts Advisory Committee. Um, I, I don't, I'm kind of, have we gotten off track? So when I put this together, I was doing it based on what the council approved in August. And then I had, had heard some input. Um, and so that's why originally what the, what, was looked at by the council, my understanding was a permanent art piece. And then there was some feedback that I received from Ryan, um, I think from, from you, Charlie, about looking at something that's not as permanent. Um, I did talk to the Arts Advisory Committee about this. They mentioned their idea of an arts trail. Um, that could be one of the concepts that's submitted. It certainly doesn't preclude that. But I was not getting direction that this was specifically for an, an arts trail. Well, I, I think there may be some confusion. The idea was that there would be permanent places, but the art that gets portrayed on them would be would be ever changing. In other words, we would have, say, sort of, for lack of a better term, a kiosk in various locations throughout town, and those would be permanent themselves. But the art that gets portrayed in them. Um, would be different and which would, would be ever changing as opposed to say, say like somebody decides they want to make a piece of sculpture and they wanted to leave it there and it would be permanently there. No, that's, that's completely off of what the whole concept was. Charlie, that's, that's, if you look at the RFP, that's in there. Okay. Yeah. So let me just jump in here. The, the RF, RFC, so this request for RFC. concepts. So it's, it's a two-step process. So the idea is we put a concept, a very general direction out there. We mentioned locations where uh, these, like you said, Charlie, uh, whether it's the permanent art or um, some sort of uh, kiosk or holder for art that can be swapped out. We, we gave suggested locations that we're thinking about, but we really want to let the arts community come to us with ideas and then based on the top three general concepts we like, we're going to give them license to come up with full-fledged proposals. So there's ample opportunity for one or multiple artists to come to us with a, with a concept exactly along the lines of what you're describing and what we've discussed. And, and if there's consensus that that is in fact the, the direction we're going to go, then detailed proposals would be submitted to that effect. So, so I, I'm very, very comfortable with where we're at, that the request for concepts, the general request for concepts that we've put out there uh, is giving plenty of latitude and flexibility for the sort of thing you're describing to take shape. So we kind of have gotten off track then, because apparently what it sounds like is that this has, this has gotten away from developing the sites uh, as, as was discussed and nailed down in the arts advisory committee and then presented uh going forward and now it's become the artists deciding rather than the town deciding where the 
the uh no charlie i think you ought to take a look at the rfp or rfc i guess it's called um i think it'll <clears throat> answer your question but if the town lists the, a number of places that they could potentially put the art and what we're right. asking for and this is to send your concept for what art you'd like to create right and it, it wouldn't necessarily i mean this is going to be an ongoing thing so and asking these people um what they want to put in there uh, you know this is going to be ongoing I would, I would get, I mean, this is what we discussed in committee. The, the feedback that we've gotten from artists is that a lot of times they're asked to do things for free. And that's, that was part of the reason that this one comes with compensation is when uh, this, this came up a couple of times when we were trying to get artists to do the window paintings in the downtown, we were trying to get, we thought it'd be a cool place to let somebody showcase their creative uh, talent. And the feedback we got was, well, it costs us time and money to do that. You know, we'd like to see some compensation included here. So, oh, and we, no one was saying that they should get away from being able to have the opportunity to perhaps um, fund um, or, or perhaps be, be, be compensated for their art. Uh, but conceptually, you know, like say, for instance, you go into the hospital and you see paintings along the wall and then there's a, a dollar figure assigned to it. So someone could then then in themselves purchase that if they wanted to. And the similar concept was brought forward, you know, in committee about doing the exact same thing that, you know, here's someone's art. It's going to be up for so many months. Um, and if you want to purchase it, it is available for purchase. And I think it, it does state that the, that the arts committee is going to review all of the concepts as well. So there is that review process that there will be once these concepts are, are submitted. Um, I, this is going to need some further discussion. I, I've got to actually I've got to be in a meeting in two minutes. And so I'm going to have to step away from from this. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to get back to you guys on this. Um, because there's some, there's been some concern from the arts advisory committee that the whole concept has changed dramatically. But again, I, I I'm going to have to table this my my comments and thoughts for right now. Uh, but I, I'm sorry, I have to go. Um, I have another meeting to chair in about a minute. So, uh, thank you all. I'll, I'll see you soon. So, Cynthia, are who are we? We're not the impetus for this. This is coming from Arts Advisory. So what, what's our role as EDC in this? So just to, so this actually came from the council. Um, I, I don't, I wasn't involved in other discussions with the Arts Advisory Committee until I talked to them about this proposal. Um, so this is more of a way to let the EDC know another way to continue our promotion of our community, ways to bring people to our community, support our artists, whether they're in Mansfield or locally. Mm -hmm. um, so it was an informational piece. And, you know, as Kristen mentioned, the Arts Advisory Committee will review these. We'll do a staff review first, and then the Arts Advisory Committee will look at the concepts. So I do think there's a lot of flexibility, um, you know, as, as Ryan noted. Maybe the last word on this. Um... As Cynthia said, the council, through uh, American Rescue Plan funding request, authorized uh, appropriation of $75,000 for this public art arts purpose. And part of that, one of the categories that Cynthia referenced, was uh, actual production of public art. So just to be clear, there was uh, some, I guess you could say, grassroots efforts or interests for us to uh, explore other alternatives like the the kiosks or these you know whatever you want to call it kind of a empty canvas i guess you could say that that charlie was talking about and so we're trying to stay true to the council's original authorization to use the funding to actually create public art while also allowing for some space for this other idea that that Charlie and some others have been advocating for. So this request for concepts really is trying to cast a wide net and give our arts community as much latitude as possible to come to us with ideas. And there's no idea that would come to us that we would say, well, this is out of bounds from an arts idea based on the request for concepts. Really anything will be considered. Under the request of concepts, 
who would actually make the request or advisory uh, and for Charlie's idea, who would actually make that request? We're anticipating that artists, whether they are, you know, professional artists or amateur artists or people that just self-identify as members of the arts community would would be the one and they could, you know, submit something as individuals, they could submit something as a, as a group of folks. Uh, we, we don't have like a prescriptive qualifications based criteria for who can who can submit except that our vision was that, you know, these would be local artists, I guess. Okay. Uh, whatever happened to the idea of an art show or a festival? Is that off the table? That's 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 oh. absolutely still part of the mix. Okay. Uh, it's getting late in the season. I don't think we'd be able to pull that off if we started now. So just to update on that piece, um, I did present that well, with both of you at the, with Brian and Steve at the Arts Advisory Committee. I asked for feedback and I hadn't received any. So in terms of staffing this, um, you know, we weren't, as you, to your point, Brian, you know, we're not in a position to do that for the spring. This needed to be something that was supported by the artist community. And so I deferred to the Art, Arts Advisory Committee to see if there was interest from artists to do that. And so we had not heard back whether there was or wasn't. So that's that's where we ended up. There are other opportunities though. We've been talking, um, I've been talking to a member of the Arts Advisory Committee to potentially do some art at our summer stroll on May 25th. So it may be a smaller element, but we are looking to per perhaps do something um, at the stroll on May 25th. To Ryan's point, casting, you know, a wide net. Are we casting a wide enough net to our, our community? Uh, do we have contact? I think that's, that's the whole point of engaging the Arts Advisory Committee is they would be the appropriate conduit to cast that net through. We wouldn't have net, we wouldn't have the same contacts that they would have. And that's why it was the meeting that Brian, you and I went to with Cynthia at the town hall. We met with them. Right. And since then, Cynthia and I have, have sent out a couple emails just following up and we haven't gotten back. Uh, anything that we can, you know, anything concrete as to what we can do. So, you know, I, I think if it's something that they were excited about as artists, um, we're here. We told them we're happy to help facilitate it, but it's not, I don't think that it's something that EDC can spearhead, you know, it's, it's got to be driven by the artists and we're here to help however we can. But if they're, if they don't have a lot of interest in, in pushing for it, then I don't think it's something that we should push for without their buy-in. I, something's got to change, I guess. All right. Um, next on here is the cultural district, the state of Connecticut cultural district discussion, which we've been working on for a while. We've been working on getting some partners up at UConn identified and uh, coordinating this because UConn is going to be an essential part of getting this designation. Um, I don't know that there's a whole lot of movement unless Cynthia, you want to jump in, but I think that was we're leaving it on so you guys know it's getting worked on behind the scenes so far. We're waiting to find the appropriate people at UConn to include before we move forward. And uh, to that point, actually, uh, Wendy, as I mentioned, Wendy Berry and Kara Workman and I have a call tomorrow at 1130. Perfect. I think we're moving forward on the uh, UConn uh, involvement. All right. That's all I have on our agenda for discussion items. Uh, we have the ever popular communications, which has a whole bunch of great stuff about the press from taste to town. Um, and some stuff on our waste finding and signage plan. Um, our next meeting is April 20th. Sorry, I went a little over tonight. We're at five after seven, but uh, <laughs> we'll try to keep it to an hour for next time. Uh, and I think if you average me out over the last few, I'm still at an hour or less. So. Thank you all very much for participating and for being here tonight. So we had forum for the meeting. Uh, anything else for the good of the order that I'm forgetting? All right. Then at this time, does someone want to make a motion to adjourn? Motion. Oh, go ahead, Nancy. <laughs> I have a motion. I gotta go. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank Aye. you so much. Thanks everyone. Aye. Have a great evening.